groups are key and they provide a venue for students to, to really try out their ideas and test them with each other and critique them and uh, see if they're consistent with evidence or not. Um, so any learning environment that can facilitate this, this group interaction is, is going to help. I think all of us do a, a version of this, but on the very first day, because um, we will be asking students to share their thinking, even if they're not sure that their thinking is correct, we do group norms. So I teach both the physics and the geology. I let them play around a little bit with the curriculum, maybe the first activity, and they're asked to get up and share their thinking. And so after they do that once, I say, okay, so thinking about how that felt where you had to share your ideas, how do you want this classroom to be? How do you want your colleagues to behave? How do you want to behave um, during the quarter? And so we record everybody's ideas about, um, you know, needing to um, have a safe space to present their ideas, that there should be mutual respect, whatever. So all of that is written down on a big piece of paper and hung in the room. So there'll be Science Education 201 norms or Science Education 202 norms, whatever. And it's a list of requests for how, how everybody should behave. And so if, this doesn't happen very often, but if it does, where um, you know people are starting to feel uncomfortable, like they're feeling made fun of or something, or they're feeling like they don't want to talk because um, they're, they're uncomfortable, we revisit the norms and say, okay, so is something not working here? And so we have a class discussion about how to make it a safe space to, to share thinking. Um, so so that, is, that has to set the stage for all of this collaborative work. A lot of the collaborative work um, takes place around whiteboarding. So we, they'll, students will do some kind of activity and then they'll be asked to, um, to develop their understanding how that, what that means conceptually. And so students will be working in their small groups, groups of three, and um, they'll be asked um, eventually to share their thinking with the rest of the class and so they'll have to write their ideas on, on a whiteboard. And, um, and then each group is doing the same thing, and so there'll be a particular prompt where multiple groups will stand up with their whiteboard and, and share their, their thoughts. In my classroom, I ask that everybody speaks. If their group is presenting a whiteboard, and it's a group of three, that each person has to say something, has to, had, has to add something. So often, while they're preparing their whiteboard, someone will say, okay, you talk about this part, you talk about this <laughs> part, you talk about this, so that when they stand up, everybody has something to say, so nobody can shrink back into the background. And periodically, I think many of us do a version of this where um, you know, I think that we all change up our groups mm -hmm. um, several times through the quarter. Um, and before changing up those groups, um, I will give a self and peer evaluation form, and part of that is to is um, asking the student to look at those norms and to say, okay, what have we done well in this class, and then what can we work mm -hmm. on? And, and they commit to writing, uh, they commit to that in writing, um, and then they're asked to set a goal for themselves um, about how they will work with their next group, um, how they'll improve, and and it's all related back to those norms. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to um, keep coming back to the norms on a regular basis mm -hmm. throughout the quarter instead of uh, waiting for a problem to happen um, and, and for students to, to really um, think about how they're interacting in their groups. Yeah, working in groups you know, presents challenges. I think it has many strengths. I think many people are, are are able to blossom in groups, and but there are also challenges, and they include making sure that the students are all on task and don't get distracted. And a lot of times, it just boils down to showing up there and and asking pointed questions about the the task at hand. Not necessarily what you're doing, but more positive. What are your opinions on this matter? Just just. And sometimes just showing up nearby, it's enough to kind of keep them on task. Uh, sometimes there's personality dynamics, and usually those 
are minor. When it becomes a real issue, really it's a matter of talking to the students individually and, and away from everybody and, and just talking with them sincerely and candidly about what, what needs to happen. And what I found really helps, and I, I think is the most important part, is, is you want to motivate them. You want to praise them for the good work. And I think we all like to be told that we're doing a good job, particularly when it's sincere and particularly when, when it's specific about what we're doing well. So every day, for example, I like to tell the students what I like or what they did great, right? And, and, and I'm specific about what it was. And I also mention when things are not going well, what needs to happen. So they know that they, when, when I tell them you're doing great for this and this reason, I'm, I'm being sincere about it. So I, so I think it really helps a lot.